Throughout aviation history, there have been various experimental and specialized aircraft that were not mass-produced but served specific purposes, such as the testing of equipment, exploring different design concepts, or attempting to break records. This focus on high-speed record-breaking and the development of specialized prototypes was characteristic of pre-World War II aviation competitions, where nations sought to showcase their engineering achievements and gain prestige. Germany was one of these competitors, entering the competition field for the highest speed during the late 30s. They successfully achieved this with the ME Sveinolnein. But before we continue with our record-setter airplane, a word from today's sponsor. SPAM! Of course you've already heard of spam. It fills your inbox and phone with unwanted messages selling you counterfeit products, scams, and all other sorts of unholy things. But how did these spammers get your email address or your phone numbers? Through data brokers. How does that work? It's simple. Let's say you registered for a serious event, the International Security Conference West 2024. We can get your data, and that of 30,000 other participants, for the cool price of 1,700 US dollars. And no, we didn't have to look on the dark web for that. Someone literally spam emailed us asking if we'd like to buy this database. And this is peanuts compared to other databases obtained from massive data breaches. What can you do to protect yourself? One answer is today's real sponsors, Aura, who can identify data brokers selling your data and have it removed. They also provide you with antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, and more in a single service. If you'd like to see how it works, use our link in the description and get a 14 days free trial to see what Aura can do for you and who is selling your data. And now, back to Nazi Germany. In the early 1930s, the German aircraft industry worked at full capacity to increase the production of new and modern aircraft designs. When the Nazis came to power in 1933, huge investments were made to build one of the most modern air forces in the world. Thanks to this, the Germans introduced a series of excellent aircraft designs that would dominate the skies over Europe in the first years of the war. Not all of these were intended for combat, as some were specifically designed to be used for propaganda to show off German industrial and technological excellency to the world. This could be best displayed by breaking various world records in aviation. In order to win worldwide prestige in the field of aviation, in 1937, Messerschmitt was instructed by the Reichsluftfahrtministerium, RLM, German Air Ministry, to begin the development of an experimental aircraft. A production order of four prototype aircraft was given. Willy Messerschmitt and his team of engineers began working on this project, designated ME209. The 209 was designed as a low low-wing, all-metal, single-seat, experimental, record-breaking aircraft. The fuselage and the wings were made of a metal frame covered in aluminum sheets. The rear tail unit had an unusual design, with the rudder being greatly enlarged to help the aircraft cope with the propeller torque. This aircraft used a standard landing gear that retracted inward from the wings. To the rear, a sliding skid was placed at the bottom part of the large tail fin. The skid was connected with a spring to the tail unit and could be completely retracted to reduce the drag. The cockpit was placed to the rear of the aircraft fuselage. This design had a huge flaw, as it severely restricted the pilot's frontal view. The canopy of this cockpit opened outwards toward the right, and in an emergency it could be jettisoned. The ME209 was to be powered by the DB600 Zeins AJ 12-cylinder liquid-cooled engine. The engine cooling system was rather unusual, as the Messerschmitt engineers wanted to avoid using a standard radiator to avoid unnecessary drag. They came up with a new design. The engine was cooled with water, which was nothing unusual, but the way the water itself was cooled was quite a new and complicated process. The hot water, the steam from the engine, was redistributed to the wings through pipes. Once in the wings, through a series of specially designed openings, the steam would be condensed back to a liquid state. The cooled water would then be brought back to the engine, where the process would be repeated again and again. The negative side of the system was the constant loss of water due to evaporation. 
which depending on the conditions like speed varied from 4 to 7 liters or 1.05 to 1.8 US gallons per minute. Due to this huge loss in a short amount of time, the aircraft had to be equipped with a 200 liter 53 US gallon water container. With this water load capacity, the ME209 had an endurance time of only 35 minutes. The prototype made its maiden flight at the start of August 1938. This flight was rather short, lasting only 7 minutes, flown by the Messerschmitt chief engineer J. H. Wurster. Initially, it was planned to use the experimental 1,800 horsepower DB601 ARJ engine. As it was not yet available, a 1,100 horsepower DB601A engine was used instead. Almost from the start, the ME209 was shown to be a troublesome design, with numerous issues detected during flight testing. Some of these included the aircraft's tendency to abruptly dive mid-flight, the controls being heavy and hard to work with either in the air or on the ground. Cockpit ventilation was poor, engine overheating problems were evident due to insufficient cooling, and cockpit visibility was quite limited. During landings, the prototype showed that it had a high sinking rate, which usually led to a harsh landing, potentially causing damage to the landing gear. Despite all of this, which would in other circumstances lead to a guaranteed cancellation of the project, the RLM officials urged that the ME209 development continue. The second prototype was completed in early 1939. It was flight tested for the first time on the 8th of February 1939. At that time, Werster gave up his position as Messerschmitt test pilot to Fritz Wendel. On the 4th of April, there was an accident during which this aircraft would be lost. After a short flight, the pilot was preparing for a landing approach. Suddenly and without warning, the engine stopped working and the aircraft rapidly lost altitude. The pilot was unable to do anything, and the aircraft hit the ground. The second prototype was lost, but surprisingly, Wendel, who was piloting the aircraft, survived the forced landing without injury. In the meantime, with the loss of this aircraft, the testing continued using the first prototype, which was finally equipped with the DB601 ARJ engine. With the loss of the second prototype and the remaining two being under construction, it was decided to use the first prototype for the anticipated world record flight. On the 26th of April 1939, while piloted by Wendel, the ME209 reached a phenomenal speed of 755 kilometers per hour, or 470 miles per hour. German Minister of Propaganda Josef Goebbels was quick to exploit this successful flight. Goebbels' propaganda machine soon published this news as a great success of the German aviation industry. To hide the experimental nature of the ME209 in propaganda news, it was renamed the ME109R. This was also done to deceive the foreign general public into believing that this was an actual operational fighter. Shortly after that, all further work on beating the speed record was strictly forbidden. Following this success, the third prototype was completed and flight tested in May 1939. Its flight career would end shortly, as its frame was mostly used for various testing and experimental duties, and the whole project lost momentum. In May 1939, the fourth prototype was flight tested. While the previous prototypes were to be used for beating international world records, this one was planned to be adopted for potential military use. It was not requested by the RLM, but was instead a private venture by Messerschmitt. Its design was modified to include new and enlarged wings, and the racing engine was replaced with a more reliable 1,100 horsepower DB601. Due to limitations of the wing-mounted cooling system, it had to be replaced with conventional radiators, which were changed several times. The wing design was also changed, as it was somewhat larger and longer than that used on the original ME209, these were also provided with an automatic leading edge slat. Given its new role, armament was to be included. This would consist of two 7.92mm or 0.3 inch MG17s placed in the wings or above the engine compartment, depending on the source. In addition, at least one 2cm or 0.78 inch cannon was also to be used, firing through the propeller shaft. 
Some sources also mention the use of two 3cm cannons positioned in the wings, but this seems highly unlikely. Installation of a light machine gun inside the wings proved impossible and was abandoned. During testing of the much-modified ME-209, it was shown to have weaker general flight performance than the already in-production ME-109. Attempts to further improve it by installing a stronger engine failed. Despite all this work, the ME-209 was simply not suited for use as a fighter, and the project thus had to be abandoned. Following the completion of its original goal, the prototype was given to the Berlin Air Museum in April 1940. Initially, the Messerschmitt workers simply kept the natural aluminum color for the ME-209. This was not appropriate for an exhibit. It would be repainted in dark blue, with its code painted on the fuselage sides. Interestingly, during its brief service, the ME-209 was often nicknamed by its crew as Fliegend Eber, in English, Flying Boar. In 1943, the Berlin Air Museum was hit during an Allied bombing raid, and many aircraft were lost. The ME-209 was damaged, but its fuselage was left relatively intact. It and other exhibits were moved to Poland for safekeeping, where it was simply forgotten. It wasn't until 1967 that Norman Wiltshire from the International Association of Aviation Historians discovered its remains during his visit to the Polish Air Museum in Krakow. The preserved ME-209 fuselage is still located at the Polish Museum, despite many attempts by the Germans to repurchase it. The third prototype was destroyed in one of many Allied bombing raids on Germany, while the last aircraft was scrapped at the end of 1943. Despite it being obvious from the start that the ME-209 would not enter production, a Japanese attaché showed interest in the project. In 1943, he approached the RLM officials with a request for technical data and that one aircraft be shipped to Japan. In the end, it appears that nothing came of this and no ME-209 was ever sent to Japan. As the war progressed, Messerschmitt engineers were trying to design a new piston-powered aircraft that would replace the ME-109. In 1943, a new project was initiated, also named ME-209. This project, besides having the same name, had nothing to do with the ME-209 world speed record aircraft. The prototype of this new design was designated ME-209V5 to avoid confusion with the previous plane, and shared many components with the already existing ME-109G. It had a fairly sound design. The few prototypes built would receive the designation ME-209A. Despite its promising performance, it was not adopted for service. This concludes our look at the ME-209 World Speed Record aircraft. What do you think about this record breaker? Should it have remained just a record holder or did it have any chance of being refitted as a fighter aircraft? Let us know in the comments. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collection of articles on our website, plain-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.